Welcome to PSK Masterclass. My name is Katrina Matei. As you've seen by the previous music video, our guest today is Swazi Jamini, commonly known to many by the name The Swazi. She started her music career very early in life, where most of us knew her from Joy Celebration, where she started as a backup singer. Her music career, in a nutshell, is a beautiful mystery filled with many awards and it's revealed in the description box below. Without wasting any more time, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Swazi Jamini. Hey there, how are you? Welcome to this new episode of PSK Mastercast. And I'm your guest for today. My name, The Swazi, otherwise commonly known as Swazi Lamini. Uh, most of you know me as a singer, <laughs> some of you jazz, most of you gospel. Uh, so today we're going to talk about all things worship leader, all things gospel artist, all things um, even female vocalist. So I have been getting a question in all of my, when did I start singing? I started with Joy Celebration at the age of 18. I'm now 42. So that's like what? My maths is not really good. That is, I think 24 years. In all the 24 years that I've been singing, I've been getting a common question from um, up and coming musicians. So Swazi, how do I start, especially female gospel artists? This is how I started. I went to an audition, Joy Celebration audition, and I think I was 18. And I started touring with them from Joyous 2, 3, 4, and 5. As I was doing that, I was getting the much needed experience of vocal training, vocal coaching, under the mentorship and the guidance of the likes of Mtunzi Namba, Jabu Shongwane, Lindalani Mkize. Uh, I had actually worked with um, Mtunzi Namba earlier on from the age of 13 with uh, his group um, that he was doing church ministry with. And um, I, I was also then at Guamanshu Christian Center a member of a girl group called God's Instruments. So my my starting to sing professionally, though not mainstream, happened from the age that I was 13. So now already that tells you that there's been a lot of background or a lot of foundational work behind who I am today. So post my being in dress liberation, I started being a backup singer for many jazz artists, including my darling late mom in Los Bongine Kumalo. Um, I've also worked with the lights of Huma Sigela. At some point, I backed Umambo Simshongo, uh, then trans transitioned to backing the Judith Sapumas, the Gloria Bossmans, the Ernie Smith. I can count, it's a lot. Um, but that for me then speaks to an institution of training. So I didn't just wake up one day and decide that I want to be a lead singer or I want to have my own album. I knew that God had that purpose for me. And I knew that that is where I was headed, but there were steps that I took into becoming who you now know as Swazi Lamini. As a backing singer, I got a wealth of information. You know, you learn discipline. I, I always say that being a backing singer is one of the most phenomenal trainings that you can ever have. If you look today at people like Abo Sismagret Motsache, Abo, Abo Gift Vilagazi, Nokanya Zamini, you know, Songkeles Eskims, the family factory that was in the then dress celebration. Some of them might not be having frontline solo careers, but they're able to sustain themselves in the industry. There's stability, there's growth. They're not just focused on being 
on a CD cover or being a leader of a band, but some of them do theater work. They do various things. They, they are multi-faceted as artists because that is what that institution of being a backing singer gives you. It gives you discipline. It broadens your spectrum of what you can do as a singer. It's not just about you just want to be in front and you just want to be the one giving direction. But sometimes you learn so much more from just being behind the scenes, being an anchor to somebody who is in front and just observing and saying, OK, that one I will do for my later projects or that one, you know, is something that I can take home with me so never ever firstly despise being a backup singer if you are trying to actually build towards being a solo being a backing a backing singer or a backup singer also helps you immensely with understanding harmony and inversions you just you are on top of your game i found that you know in my journey and experiencing other lead singers as well who maybe just budded out of nowhere and they were just thrown into the front line. Um, they struggle more with, with understanding the basic concept of harmony, keys, etc. They just know how to lead. They don't know how to become part of an ensemble. For me, I feel like I am who I am today because I have the I understand the respect that you need to have not only for the person in front of you, but even for the band. You can be leading a song, but if you if you are not aware of your accompaniment, you can actually just throw the whole thing out because you are only thinking, I'm here, I'm ready to impress, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you are not taking into account the fact that you are with a full ensemble that is there to accompany you. That is number one for me. So, yeah, number two. Understanding your vision, who you are. We are not all the same. We don't all sing the same music. We don't all excel on the same styles of music. Most people prefer me doing jazz. <laughs> That's because I grew up listening to jazz. My dad used to play jazz all the time in the house. And even when I went to um, Natal Technican then, now I don't, I think it's called DUT. I think um, I studied jazz and light music. And uh, so I have a, a basic background of, you know, what happens in that art form or in that style of expression. But the reason why I later on ventured into gospel is because I understand music as my calling. What am I saying? Back to vision. You need to have a vision. Is it something you want to do for money? Or is it something that you are called to do? Why are you doing it? Who are you in the music? And, and when you can answer those questions, you can then place yourself in the right path to actually beginning your journey with the gift that God has endowed you with. So back to jazz. A lot of people ask me, why did you stop singing jazz? Oh, you are so good. Uh, you know what it is? It's exactly what I've just said, my calling. God gave me a mandate. God gave me a vision. God gave me a gift to impact nations. I'm not saying you cannot impact nations through jazz. You definitely can. But for me, jazz is for a niche market. It's for a specific type of people who understand that train of thought or understand that expression. It's not everyone in church who is going to understand scuba dee ba dee ba da ba da ba da, <laughs> you know, but it's everyone who understands, come on everybody, raise your hands and worship God. So it was more about the expression. I found that when I was a jazz singer, it was more personal. It was about me and my skill and how much I can do or I can show off. But when I am a full on gospel minister, and I say minister because there's a difference between minister and artist. But when I'm a full on gospel minister, it's no longer about 
how I sing or how I can sing, though the Bible says worship God skillfully, the skill has to be there. But it's more about carrying the presence of God and carrying the grace and carrying the anointing and doing it to impact people, to change lives and to touch nations. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that there's a big dif- there's a difference between being a gospel artist and a minister. A gospel artist is someone who literally, I believe, is like a guaito artist or a jazz artist or a whatever genre. It's like a painter or a doctor. It's someone that, that has got the talent and the skill and the know-how and they 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 actually want to use it for financial revenue. Now that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Please, <laughs> you can quote me on that one. Um, you're an artist, it's an art form. You're a gospel artist, you just prefer gospel music. Now, I just mentioned that there's a difference between a gospel artist and a gospel minister. This is my understanding or my explanation of it based on, remember, the, 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 the fact that I've actually, I have history doing both jazz and gospel. Um, so a gospel artist for me is someone who is the same as an I'm a piano artist or the same as a quieto artist. It's just that they prefer the expression of religious music. They're an artist, it's for money. Um, they have no obligations to, to, to live a life that is required of a gospel minister. A gospel minister is someone who has an understanding of the fact that you are not just singing gospel because people cry when you sing gospel music, but you, 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 you sing gospel to minister to people. You sing gospel because the Holy Spirit is the one who has given you a charge or who has commissioned you to be a gospel minister. For me, a gospel minister is more of a preacher or a pastor or an evangelist or a prophet or whichever one of the fivefold, you know. Uh, It's just that you do it in a musical expression. I don't know if that makes sense. What am I saying? I'm saying we often mistake uh, wanting to be a gospel artist for being a gospel minister or is it the other way around no it's the other way around we often mistake uh, wanting to be a gospel minister for being a gospel artist we don't want to be accountable we don't want to be to be held accountable for our lifestyle and let me make an example at some point in my life i was singing gospel but i was not living a life that warrants a gospel minister's life. I was living anyhow. So I won't count things here because I don't want you to think that I'm judging you, but you know what I mean when I say anyhow, meaning that I was not guided by the Holy Spirit. I was not guided by the word of God. I had no conviction in my spirit. I was just singing gospel music. There, I was a gospel artist. But now I'm at a point where Even the songs that I write are inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks to me and through me, through the music. And there are things that I just know are taboo or a big no-no because I am a gospel minister. I have to be accountable. Let me simplify it. We're very quick to point errors of pastors and uh, church leaders because we know how they should live, right? Being a gospel minister, there are things that people can point and say, but you can't do this, you can't do that. You can't. I'm talking about in terms now of your lifestyle. Pick the lazy drinking, smoking, all the things that the Bible says that are a sin, you know, uh, you need to steer clear of if you're a gospel minister because you carry the very presence of God. You are not just anyone who just woke up and decided today I'm going to sing a gospel song. It's going to be a hit. I'm going to make money. I hope I've simplified that. So I've just unpacked to you now the difference between the two. Now, both these require preparation and the preparation is very similar. I mean, whether you're an artist or a minister, you need to prepare. As a gospel minister, if you're not full of the word of God, trust me, there's nothing that you're going to bring out. That's also something that separates gospel artists from gospel ministers. You can hear a gospel artist. You can hear a gospel minister. Most people actually say that when I sing, I preach a sing. (laughs) I'll quote the Bible silly in my music. It'll be like, I'm preaching, yet I'm singing. And it's one of the things that have become my signature. Or, And I don't even set out 
to do it. I don't even plan that, okay, I'm going to quote the, the, the Bible or whatever. It's just the Holy Spirit that gives you the utterance and that gives you the unction. So you, you need to be full of the word if you're going to be a gospel minister. You need to live, breathe, sleep the word of God. Prayer. You need to be intimate with the Holy Spirit. You need to have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. If he cannot speak to you here, he cannot come out of here to change his people. If you can't hear him, then he cannot speak to his people. Remember the song, it's just a medium of him he uses to speak and touch lives. So if you sing a song like, You'll Make a Way, which I'm singing on this episode, it can end up being words if it's not being powered or fueled or unctioned by the Spirit of the Lord. But if it's got the backing of the Holy Spirit, a person will truly get the intention of the song because the songs that we write need to be intentional. If you're writing a song about healing, there needs to be an intention for the song to bring healing into somebody's life. And if you're writing about a song about breakthrough, there needs to be an intention for the song to bring breakthrough in somebody's life. I always say that I get amazed when I see uh, gospel artists who kind of don't believe in miracles but sing about them. Because when you don't believe in miracles and you sing about miracles, it means that the song that you've written has got no power. It does not carry a miracle working power. You are just singing words because it's in fashion in this season to be singing about miracles. But if you have a strong conviction of the fact that the God that we serve performs miracles even today, that song will then carry that power and that grace and it will be able to impact and affect people's lives. So now let's, let's unpack the creative aspect of preparation. Now, I think you know that if Swazi is coming to a concert, you're expecting bright hair, either blonde or red or whichever color. It's called image. As an artist, you need to be very clear, especially a gospel artist, about the image that you are portraying. Now, I've come under fire for my hair. And, um, you know, remember the thing that I said before that you must have the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is cool with my hair. So if he's cool, <laughs> I know that I'm fine. <laughs> but um, what am I saying? You need to have an idea of who you are and who you are ministering to. And then you will package yourself in the right way. Maybe let me explain why sometimes I come across as not necessarily conservative as a gospel minister. And uh, I'm a bit on the extreme, you know, uh, side of things. I'm called not for people in the church. I'm called for people outside of the church. I want someone who is able to wild out in their lives to be able to look at me and say, oh, I can identify with her. She, you know, sometimes as, as Christians, we become all prim and proper and 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 not accommodative. Someone said to me, a woman of God should not be coloring her hair. I was like, so what should a woman of God be doing? Really, if we had to be primitive and live according to what the Bible um, you know, said, then we shouldn't be piercing our ears. We should not be wearing pants. There are so many things that we should, in fact, as women, we should probably not even be preaching according to the norms. But now you need to know who you are called to so that you can package yourself properly so that you can reach the right people. I'm fun loving, I'm easygoing, and I am not the King James version type of Christian. <laughs> I'm more the message Bible <laughs> kind of Christian. So I'm trying to reach a common person in the street. I'm trying to relate to people who, I don't wanna put up a wall that says, don't reach me, I'm holy. I'm actually, some people actually find that I'm actually too easy for my, for my age, but I know that it ministers to a person that would not even give an ear to what I'm trying to teach or preach. But when they look at me, I'm approachable, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm relatable. So have a clear understanding of who you are. And when you are clear and you are comfortable in who God has called you to be, people will accept you, people will listen to you. And when you're trying to be something that you're not, you won't always be able to live up to the standards that you are setting for yourself. 
So still on the subject of, of, of image, it's important for you as a minister to evolve. Be very much aware of what is happening around you. Be very much aware or discern the times and seasons. You know, right now we are in the season of the pandemic. People can't get to church or people, um, the numbers are restricted, especially in our country and in various other countries, people are on lockdown. So you need to evolve as a minister. You need to think, how can I reach people still and still be able to impact nations without, you know, doing things normally the way that, that, that I was. I remember I went under fire in May 2020 when I came and I said, I'm charging for a concert online. I was like, 70 rands a ticket. It's going to be online on my YouTube channel. It's a private screening. Do you know that there were people who paid tickets to see that show? I think people need to understand that, number one, we need to continue as artists. We need to still make a living as artists or as gospel ministers or as ministers. And we need to find other ways of making revenue. And um, that was me saying, the world is going this way. Maybe it was too early because now everybody is doing it and it's all right. <laughs> but that was me saying, the world is going this way. We need to start preparing for this, this kind of, of setups whereby at the comfort of your of your of your own living room, you are able to buy a ticket and you're able to watch a concert. And that's exactly where we are now. Because um, you know, numbers keep being increased and decreased, but online that's where people are. So you need to create your market that is going to understand. Start with five people. Five people will become twenty five people. Twenty five people will become two hundred and fifty people. But grow your market and have a group as simple as a WhatsApp group. A WhatsApp group takes 250 people. Put those people who love your music there. Communicate with them. Chat to them. Tell them that this is coming up. This is what I'm doing. You'll find that those 25 people can be able to put food on your table. And they can be able to do it consistently. And they do it out of a passion and an understanding that we love Swazi. We support what she does. And therefore, if she says she's selling a t-shirt for 150 rands, we're buying. If she says she's having an online concert for 100 rands, we're buying. Have, have a market, have a, a group of people that, that respond to what God has placed in your life and, and bring those people close and have a relationship with them so that you're able to build and grow as an artist. I just mentioned t-shirts just now. As an artist, you need to learn to cast your nets in more than one direction. You sing, you make music. Music sells online. Online is a bit difficult because it can get pirated, etc., etc., etc. What else do you do? I've survived on being able to capitalize on the seven streams of income rule, uh, especially during lockdown. Number one, my YouTube channel. Make sure that your YouTube channel as an artist is up to standard. And it's a place where people know that they can get information concerning you. It's your television. You don't have to be on DSTV. You have to just be online and you have to, it, there you can do things however you want. If you are cooking one day like I do, you are cooking. People must know that you are human. If you are selling your clothing as well, people must know that this is what you do. Put everything that you do in a platform where people can find you. People tend to feel like they know you better when you let them into other spaces in your life that, that, that you do. All right, let's talk music. Let's talk musicality. When you're a singer, you need to find an MD, music director, that understands you. One that you can irritate and bug and do all sorts of things to. I have two such people. Number one, my husband. <laughs> my husband, you know, um, he, anything that is related to my craft, I sort of dump on him and say, this is what I need. And he just has to make it a reality, right? And then Lungelongobo, someone that I, I call and I say, I've got this song, can we work it out? Uh, how does it sound? Can we bring it? Can we make it contemporary? No, I need this feel. You know, you need to understand who you are, your sound. There are things that I can't do. I've got limitations as a singer. There are things that I can do. 
and on my strengths, that's where I capitalize. Number one, I know this is not a number one. I've had so many number ones. The importance of understanding your voice and the keys that you sing in so that you don't sound like someone is you every time that you sing. So on my songs, like I'll tell you, I'll just run you through my songs. I will never ever sing You Are Great if it's not on the key of F. That's the, that's the key. And I'm sticking to it. If I sing it on any other key, it's going to sound like something else. You'll make a way on B. A semitone lower? Yeah, but a semitone higher? No. You need to understand your keys. If I'm singing, give you all the glory, I know it's on D. Actually, I've been told that most of the time, when I just open my mouth and sing a cappella, chances are I will sing on D, which means what? That's my key, except for a few odd songs here and there, most on, of my music. I don't advise singing on the same key all the time. Try and take it a tone lower, a semitone higher, because when you now do all your songs on the same key, it sounds like one very long song that does not end. There is no color. So you need to, to, to have a relationship. And then I used to play piano. Guys, I used to play piano a little bit when I was at, what was it? Natal Technica, now DUT. So for me, I understand, okay, from C to C, and then this is where I am. Just those small things. What am I saying? It's important to have, we used to call it, they used to call it keyboard technique back then. It's so important for you to understand, J, the white notes, you know, C, D, E, F, G, uh, the black notes. It's now when you have the sharps and the flats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm just showing off, right? So as a singer, it's important to know just you from middle C to the higher octave, what's going on, so that you can be able to communicate. Pella, these guys that play for us, <laughs> the cats, they, they, they went to school. And I find that most singers, or let me not generalize and say most singers, most singers don't actually bother themselves enough with knowing the theoretical aspect of music. It's very important for you. It will help you not look like Los Isotulayo, but you will look like you know what you are doing. So we're speaking about song selection now. Um, most of my songs, I'm actually at, at, I'm at a disadvantage, maybe an advantage of the fact that all my songs, if not 99.9999% of my songs, I get from the Holy Spirit. I don't sit down and say, now I'm gonna write a song about this, but they just get deposited in my spirit. So how do I pick my songs? Um, post having written or post having received the songs. If you're having a concert, put the songs that people know. You don't want to frustrate yourself. You want people to sing along to what you're doing. You want people to go with you to a place. So I always say that a song like You Are Great For Me is a firecracker. I'll always put that song first on the list because I know it's boom, you know. Uh, people will know it. And that song carries a grace of its own. Like when you sing that song, um, it just goes right up. So you start hard, ne? and then you, it's, it's almost like when, when, you are, when you are doing a set list for, or when I'm doing a set list for, for, for a concert, I want to start there. And then I want to come, 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 come down with it and then shoot up again, you know? So it, the graph has to, of course, it doesn't have to dip a lot but you start high and then you just tone it down a little bit and then you pick it up again. Let's just say a concert has given you 45 minutes. 45 minutes is about seven songs. In that seven songs, um, you would find that I would first identify which ones are the songs that people know. Put those songs at the beginning and at the end. Whatever new music I'm presenting, put it somewhere in the middle because people have been listening to something that they're familiar with in the beginning. And then when you bring in something new, it's like already they're with you, you've got them. And then at the end, you just pick it up and they're like, ah, that's my jam. You know how people are. Um, even if it's a gospel concert, um, you do the same. A concert is a concert. When it comes to ministry though, 
you are in a church situation, you need to hear from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you'll put a song in your program and the Holy Spirit will say, nope, not that one, but this one. And that will be the song that will actually just unlock the atmosphere and allow God to move. So you hear differently. Um, that's why I was saying even earlier, that there's a difference between the artistic element and the ministry element. But if you are a minister, even when you are invited as an artist, trust me, you minister, you've got no double up there. So after all of what I've been saying to you, it is very important to invest in your calling, your craft, your talent. As a singer, you need to have a microphone of your own, <laughs> especially in these days of COVID-19. You need to have a microphone of your own. You need to have an in-ear system of your own. Uh, at least I'm gonna count the things that I do know that you know I have, thanks to my husband, who believes so much in <laughs> buying equipment and investment. Um, you need to have a workstation uh, if you can. Uh, remember I said that you need to just have the basic concept of a piano, knowing the keys. You know, you can even do triads, you know, and you know, uh, come up with your own uh, compositions. You need to have a laptop and uh, invest in your image. Invest in your image. Um, I've seen most singers go to gym. I'm not coming for that. I'm okay. I'm a mom of three and you've known me like this all my life. Just accept me. <laughs> but it's important to stay healthy and fit. And uh, your look, the clothes that you wear. You know when you're going to be taking people's money and making them pay for concerts? You need to present and package yourself in a way that says that I'm worth your money. Do you understand what I mean? Um, so invest invest in your in your clothes your wardrobe invest in your hair invest in 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 an image man package yourself you are selling you're a product you are selling yourself to someone you want someone to be able to say i can listen to swazi lamini because of how she looks and uh oh yeah singers prepare yourself for interviews most most of us when we go out there and we do interviews we go out and we say um 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 you know uh invest in vocal lessons if you know that you are shaky here and there i always ask my husband to you know uh train me and help me exercise my muscle uh this one you know every time and of course uh it seems like because you know husband and wife relationship i have to pay more <laughs> <laughs> so invest in vocal vocal classes, um, whatever, research, 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 find out what's happening, you know, around you, how, how people are doing concerts now, come up with nice concepts, don't just invest in your craft, invest, don't just, you know, my biggest splurge so far has been the Alabaster DVD, where I was like, Everyone is recording DVDs, but I want to do something nice and something me, something exceptional, something the Swazi. And I went and I did three stages in one night. It was like practically having three concerts. For me, that was if I put myself out there, let me put myself properly. Let people know that, you know, this is how she thinks of herself. So you must have a clear understanding of who you are and how you want to do things. So invest, 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 invest. I know that, you know, we just want to make money, but when we make it, let's put it back into our craft so that the revenues become, people go for what they think is wow all the time. So after having said all of that, I want to thank my host, Pastor Katu, for having me on PSK Masterclass today. And I hope that you've learned a thing or two from what I've shared. And you basically have a small glimpse on what it takes to actually begin, start, and maintain your career as a gospel minister, gospel artist, jazz artist, because you can apply these rules to absolutely any genre. I'm going to play out now with Pastor Katu on a current hit single of mine, and I'm calling it a hit because it is hitting the right spots. Amen. Uh, we're going to play out with a song called You'll Make a Way, and I believe that God will make a way in your career, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. You 
you'll split the seas You'll move the mountains You'll quench the fire For my sake As floods surround me Winds below for me You'll calm the storm God For my sake One more time You'll split the seas You'll move the mountains You'll quench the fire For my sake As floods surround me Winds below
start now You've never lost a battle, God You won't start now You stand undefeated You stand uncontested We trust you, we trust you, Lord We trust you, we trust you, Lord You're making a way out of no way You're making a way out of no way You make a way Where there's no way, God You'll put out the 